Now let's talk about training. Let's talk about let's let's talk about competitions versus reality for a second. Um, you know, let's face it, competition's fun. We go to the range, we do competitive drills all the time. All of us are always trying to uh, outdo the other guy. Um, it's fun, and if it's applied correctly, it can help you in your marksmanship, your weapon handling skills, and your confidence. But with the positives that come from competition, uh, also comes um, potentially, potentially bad habits of moving too fast for the tactical situation, right? Uh, in real life, the bad guy and how fast he falls is going to dictate the speed of that fight, right? You, you can run all day, but if you run to your death, I mean, you did yourself no good. It might be a fast process, or it might be a slow process, depending on the bad guy and how fast he falls, uh, the bad guy dying, but you should get in the habit of solving one problem at a time before moving on to multiple threats, right? You use your cover and you take that opportunity to find one, deal with it, move to the next one, deal with it, but don't rush out there and try to get everything done at once, you're gonna die. Um, you can shoot two rounds on paper, or you can, you, can, you can ping a piece of steel and you can move to the next target. But in reality, two rounds or the sound of steel being struck, it may not solve your problem. So train yourself to shoot until it goes away, right? Think about this for a second. When do you stop shooting? Until whatever you're shooting stops doing what you shot it for in the first place, right? In one engagement one night at about seven yards under nods, uh, I punched the guy twice with uh, five, five, six rounds, and then I stopped for just a split second on that trigger, looking for a response from that dude. We were trained to do controlled pairs, right? That's not a double tap. A double tap is just bang, bang. A controlled pair is I see the sight, bang, I see the sight, bang. Not double taps, there's a difference. But So I, I, I popped him twice and watched for a second, and that was dumb of me. Uh, the pro because the problem was that he's still standing with his AK. And so I hit him with two more before he began to fall to the ground. And I, I couldn't believe it, but as I watched, he stood back up before he collapsed a second time, before his uh, hydraulic fluid leaked out and he lost pressure and died. Lesson learned from me. Shoot until they go away. Not one, not two, not maybe three. Uh, so what we did was we, we adapted a version of the bill drill. Right, you know the bill drill, it's six rounds, right? The benefit of the bill drill is not only does it uh, teach speed and recoil control and the ability to follow the sights, but it conditions shooters to not uh, be locked into stopping too soon. We shot five to the body and one to the head, right? The bill drill is just dump six center mass. We would go five to the body and drive one to the head, and if he's, that's just if he's still twitching as a failure drill with the rifle. Why five? because it might take the human body that long to react to the trauma that you're inducing with 5.56 five, or 9 or whatever you're shooting. At the time of the engagement I just described to you, uh, we were using military green tip, uh, AP ammo, and the energy transfer with that round was minimal. Realizing we had a stop and power problem, we developed that drill uh, that would work on any determined individual, and we made it part of our training package on pre-deployment workups.